Hey guys, today we have a very special video for you because today is just about having fun. Now, we've done educational videos, we've done tributes to the veterans, we've done show and tell videos, a lot of really cool videos showing you some guns, but today is just about having fun. Let me show you. It was a while ago, I, I think it was almost a year ago, that uh, I was showing you some accessories and I included this pack of German cigarettes. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, maybe you remember it, uh, maybe you haven't even seen the video, but this is like brand new. Uh, Salima was the uh, manufacturer of the German cigarettes in Dresden. Now that's on here somewhere. Here it is. Dresden, they were founded in 1871. And there's 24 Stuck, uh, 24 pieces, 24 cigarettes in here. And they were three and a third uh, Reich's pennies, basically, Reich's pennies, which comes to about 80 cents for a pack of cigarettes. So this 80-year-old, uh, let me back up and say, uh, we believe this was made in 1940. The reason we say that is the style of the box. Uh, we looked it up, uh, looked up the history of the company. Style of the box indicates this pack of cigarettes is from 1940. Survived the war, survived this all this time, unopened. So this is in brand new, unopened condition. The seal is not broken on it. And it also has a tax stamp. That's embossed on there. That's a, it actually looks the same as a proof mark that you would see on a gun. Um, but that's the proof mark that says that this, the tax was paid. We'll talk a little bit about taxes being paid and the, the history of these German cigarettes and a little bit about, uh, I will give you a little bit of education, but all of that is to say, uh, Randy, who's behind the camera, Randy and I are going to break this open in, on camera, first time in 80 years. Uh, this will be opened up and we are going to smoke, each smoke one cigarette. Now, neither one of us are smokers, so uh, this should be interesting, but we thought just for fun, let's smoke a cigarette. Now, we, we're waiting till like four in the afternoon because we wanna wait till the end of work, kinda uh, end of our day, go outside and smoke a cigarette. Uh, and we are gonna use these matches. Now, these in particular, these are Walther matches, so these would have been, you know, the sales, um, uh, sales staff would give these out just like people use uh, um, matches for advertising. I get a lot of restaurants and things that give me a pack of matches. Um, Carl, Carl Walder from the Zellamellis factory in Turrigan. And uh, notice that's a PPK. And for those of you who watch my channel, you're really, really smart because what you know about this, this is from the uh, 1930s, the early 30s, because that's a 90 degree safety on that PPK. And uh, this loosely translates into Walder, the best in small caliber weapons. Um, so this was an advertisement for the Walder um, uh, line of guns, which at that time would be models one through nine plus the PP and PPK. And then this is a post-war uh, similar uh, pack of matches. You know, see there's two rows here of matches. Here there's two rows, two have been used, but um, uh, this one, however, is uh, post-war, I believe. Uh, and this says, um, uh, we make more than calculations. Uh, that, the reason for that is they did make calculators and office equipment. Uh, this also could be wartime or pre-war, I'm not sure. But the style uh, does look more like a uh, post-war. So this could be post-war. This is definitely from the 1930s. So we're going to use original matches and break this open. And 80 years later, it'll see the, the light of day. I don't know what condition they'll be in, uh, but we'll find out. Let me give you a little history about smoking in the Third Reich. Well, if you're like me, you've seen uh, a lot of war movies. And of course, the iconic uh, German soldier when he's captured, uh, you see here, uh, they're all over the internet. You can see pictures of German soldiers smoking cigarettes, uh, especially when they're captured. A lot of times their hands are shaking and the first thing they want is an American cigarette. But I do think about the German soldiers and smoking cigarettes and also popularized by the show Laugh-In. If you're as old as me, you know Laugh-In and there is that guy, I can't think of his name, but the little guy. And he would be uh, looking around the corner and say, very interesting. Very interesting, but thoroughly supercilious. <laughs> it was not supercilious. 
So that image of Nazi soldiers smoking cigarettes is kind of uh, implanted in my brain. And uh, the, the facts are actually a lot different um, when we take a look at the fact that in the Third Reich, Hitler in particular was a health food nut. He was actually a, a health nut. Um, some historians will say he was way ahead of his time. I, I hate to give uh, Hitler any credit at all, but he was probably way ahead of his time in terms of the health of the German people. And so for one thing, they discouraged smoking. Now, uh, back in the 20s, here's an ad from the 20s. Uh, they were, of course, uh, encouraging smoking. But sometime in the 30s, the German scientists found the link between smoking and cancer. Now, there's a whole commentary there why in the United States we were suing in the 70s because nobody told us they were bad for, for us, when in fact, uh, my dad says when he was growing up, they called them uh, uh, coffin nails. So somebody knew they were bad for your health, and certainly the German scientists, of all the countries in the world, they were the strictest on smoking cigarettes because the German scientists determined that smoking had a direct link to cancer. Now, getting back to Hitler, um, I did watch a show on TV, and they documented the fact that Hitler uh, really pushed for everybody to eat raw vegetables and raw fruit. Don't steam them, don't cook them, don't fry them. He encouraged the people only to eat raw vegetables. And people say when they visited him and there was a banquet at his house or something, you were inundated with raw fruit and raw vegetables. Now, he did serve meat. And early on, people did not know he was a vegetarian. Now, that's a little controversial because uh, if you go online, people swear he was a vegetarian. Uh, his direct staff has said he ate meat, but very, very rarely. He also very rarely drank and he was a, a, avid non-smoker. He hated people smoking. And so there were posters throughout Germany basically uh, telling women, don't smoke, it's bad for your health, it's very unladylike. So women in particular were encouraged not to smoke. However, the soldiers, obviously, they did smoke, but they were restricted. They were only allowed six cigarettes per day. As opposed to the American army, they got uh, 20 to more than 20 a day as part of their ration. So Germany uh, did get their tobacco from, uh, mostly from Turkey, uh, but the factory in Dresden actually made the cigarettes and they were issued to the troops, they were rationed. In fact, the pack of cigarettes, uh, I think it says something about you have to return the used packet before you can buy another one. So basically, it's kind of like when you had a soda pop and you had to bring back the bottle in order to get another pop bottle. Uh, they, they rationed them, they controlled them, and they heavily regulated. So again, uh, a lot of propaganda about not drinking too much, eating fresh fruits and vegetables, and definitely not smoking. So along with the limit of six cigarettes per day for troops, you were not allowed to smoke indoors. You were not allowed to smoke on duty. Um, and so generally there were designated smoking areas. You can see why they um, really, Hitler was ahead of his time in terms of the, the warnings against cigarette smoke. Now, one other thing that the uh, Nazi party did, you remember that uh, tax stamp, they also uh, put a huge tax on cigarettes to discourage, they made them expensive to discourage people from smoking. All of the same tactics that um, our governments use to discourage people from smoking, uh, with basically the propaganda, uh, the, the pressure, not smoking indoors. Now, early in the war, again, the six, six uh, cigarette limit, uh, that actually became even less because there were not even six cigarettes. They were running out of cigarettes because being made in Dresden, uh, Dresden was firebombed by the Allies uh, late in the war, I think 43 or 44. And literally, the factory went up in smoke. Uh, basically, the, the town of Dresden was uh, bombed heavily and the factory was destroyed. So finding cigarettes toward the end of the war was very, very difficult. And thus, the uh, stereotype of when Germans surrendered, the first thing they asked for was a Americanish cigarette. I'm not sure that's German. Could be. All right, so now let's have some fun. We're going to go out to the porch. Randy and I are going to smoke a cigarette. Why don't you join us? Okay, we're just chilling on a Friday afternoon. It's late afternoon, actually, getting ready to go home, but we thought it's time to open our box of cigarettes. Again, uh, this is 80 years old. Uh, German cigarettes. Now, I noticed that Ian, whenever he does a fun video, he always wears the different hats. So, Randy and I were going to wear hats. However, 
um, if we, German cigarettes, if we wear a German hat, I'm convinced that if I wore a German hat, it's going to go out on the internet, clips of me with Nazi memorabilia on my head, and I'll never be able to run for office. Randy's a young man. I'm mm -hmm. sure he has a political career ahead of him. Uh, so let's wear our hats. Um, sure. Put those on. Okay. That just helps get us in the mood. I have my paratrooper D-Day hat, and he's got his medic paratrooper. I don't know what the heck's going on. <laughs> See that strap? The, the strap. strap? That's this, paratrooper, uh, I think. What is this strap here? What does this do? That's your job. I'm going to put this behind. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'll put this behind. Get me. that on, and then I'm going to open okay. those packages. I'm on. I'm good. Um, no chin strap. I was looking for Okay. So, uh, come on in. Let's open these up, see what they look like. Now, um, as I'm doing this, I have to admit, I have not smoked a cigarette since junior high. I have no memory of smoking a cigarette, but it's been since junior high. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to rip it. Oh, wait. Something's happening. It's moving. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So take a look at that. I mean, there's no filters at all. So these are like brand new. Here, Randy, check that. So there's the, uh, yeah, no, look at that. That's no filter. That's just pure tobacco. Again, uh, comes from Turkey. Thank you, sir. Straight to the uh, German army. It smells uh, like almost chocolatey. No way. Yeah. You're just trying to tell me. Yeah, I'm trying to sound smart. <laughs> no, I don't smell anything. Could no, it, no, it smells. I, I don't smell a thing. Mm. Um, it smells very good. Are right. we supposed to lick it before we? No, no. Like a cigar? I think Just, uh, just... I think this end goes in. Yeah. Um, right. So, for me, junior high, when was the last time you smoked a cigarette? Last time I smoked a cigarette was in college. And my wow. mom knows about that. <laughs> <laughs> my mom knows about that. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I went to a Christian school, and I got fined for smoking on campus. Of course you did. And then I stopped, because I didn't want to get in trouble. But now... Now he's going to get in trouble. Now it's for history. I'm going to try it. lighting yours. Yeah, please. So these are the matches this we've is, already uh, discussed. This is original. from the Walder factory. So we have Walder factory with Nazi, um, Nazi approved. That's Nazi Waffen stamps, uh, cigarettes. And the only Zip. thing better is if we had SS runes. Yes. Runes. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Go first. Yeah, go ahead. If he doesn't die, then I'll try it. Oh, my gosh. They're going to be gone in seconds. Don't inhale, wow. by the way. Wow. Did you notice? Um, that is really good. <laughs> no, don't tell me. Yes, it is. All right. Come on, light me up. Mm. Now, you know, when you see the German, it's very interesting. They always have it like, very Sehr in interessant. Very interesting. Try uh, that. Okay. I'm going to, can someone, our assistant can hang on to this. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try that. Don't they're burn, don't they're pink wood, by the way. Yeah. They are wood. Where's the... First uh, strike. I did it on the first strike. All right. Ready? I think you got my hair. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Internet, I'll take mine back. What do you think? <laughs> now, uh, harsh? A little harsh. Now, these are great. It's no wonder the Germans, whenever they surrendered, they always said, American cigarette, American cigarette. Uh, how's my German, by the way? I think it's pretty darn good. I think this is pretty darn good. It yeah. doesn't even need a filter. I could definitely get addicted to this. Um, it's yeah. very smooth, honestly. I think it's smoother than modern cigarettes. I feel very sophisticated. Yeah, me too. And you know what? It does have a chocolatey flavor. I don't and know. I'll take that with me to my grave. Let's blow it at the camera. Right? Yeah, let's blow it at the camera. Yeah. Yeah, I could do this once. I could do this once every 80 years. Yeah, it's very nice. I think it's, uh, it's very smooth, enjoyable. So now if I want to go scuba diving, I got some tobacco in my mouth. I was telling the guys before this, this is my ashtray. I was telling the guys before this that I went scuba diving with my closest friend, 
we were down in the Bahamas, and we were filling out the form. We'd never been scuba diving before, so we had to check off the disclaimer, we won't sue you, uh, we don't have a heart condition, we don't have breathing problems. And the question was, have you ever smoked? And I said no. My friend, who is very fastidious mm. and a stickler for rules, he said yes. At which point they said, I'm sorry, you can't go scuba diving. Which we were going to, two of us were going to go together out on a boat. He wasn't going, I wasn't going to go by myself. So bottom line is, we went back and forth. I said, I've never seen you smoke a cigarette. He goes, well, I did smoke a cigarette when I was in junior high. So I said, well, they're not talking about that. They said, do you smoke? Have you ever smoked? And he said, yes. He goes, yes, I smoked when I was one cigarette when I was in junior high. So the bottom line is we didn't get to go scuba diving because he was a stickler for the rules. So the moral of the story is don't be so concerned about the rules. It's a good moral. I love it. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, man, that's... I get a much bigger watch. Oh, yeah. You could blow, Mine's much better blow smoke rings this, with that. Um, this, this is in perfect condition. I, I don't have anything to can compare it to. No, it's, These uh, are in perfect condition. But Seriously, it, it, if you're a smoker, uh, this is quite an experience. They're, they're very smooth. Uh, they have like a thick, uh, almost like a cigar taste. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of tastes a little older than modern cigarettes. But it's very, oh, that is, it's very smooth, and it's good. So I would do it again. Go to Whole Foods today and get your Turkish cigarettes, only nineteen ninety five. <laughs> Smoking King is good for you, no matter what they say. Smoking King is good for you, no matter what they say.